Hi, uh, it's uh, Xavier by the back door. Plants right now are still putting a lot of their energy into producing flushes of growth to provide those um, canopy or those um, energy energy grabbing devices, solar panels, so that they can uh, be ready, fully pumped up to the, do the next phase, which is all the vascular growth. So, you know, in terms of pruning, I'm really at the, uh, probably at the, the latter stage of where my pruning would be. So I'm really now going around and pruning practically everything that I haven't already touched. Um, so some of the videos you might see on larch, which I've already done, won't come out. Um, but tell you, if you're on your larches and they're showing those long shoots, prune them. Um, go back to one of the earlier videos I showed uh, and start the pruning cycle if you're trying to get more ramification. Again, your trident maples, Japanese maples. Um, now it's time to again tidy up pruning um, and try and give the chance for the plant that if it's going to send out a second flush or even a third flush, that it's got time for that flush to actually harden off before we get into the cooler weather. If we leave our pruning too long, the growth, the uh, the new growth will never ever harden off quickly enough before the colder weather can actually uh, hamper or kill it. So that's just uh, for anyone who happens to be waiting. I don't suppose anyone is. Um, so I'm going to do maple. And the first thing I want to talk about is this big thing about leaf burn or lack of water. Get that balance wrong, and uh, you can either uh, drown the roots and kill the plant, um, or not give the water enough plant and uh, uh, give the plant enough water and kill it. Um, or somewhere in between and the truth is everyone has different environmental conditions so we have a broad rule about water we have a broad rule about um, lots of things but you know I've learnt that a lot of the rules that apply you know somewhere like far north you know the real north cold places I don't know like like Preston um, don't apply to me also if you live in a valley or, or areas where weather gets sort of just different little micro weather climates you might find that you're absolutely totally different from somewhere that's sort of half an hour away from you uh, probably a bit extreme but certainly I know my sister lives in Horsham and she says it's a completely different climate there because of the sort of bowl shape they live in but here one of the biggest biggest problems we get is wind but if you're finding you're getting the tips browning you've either got an issue with the roots and not getting the nutrients of the water up into the foliage in which case it's a root problem Truth is, it's really doing major issues. You wait till the, the next available potting opportunity to have a look and see if you've got good drainage or there's any issues there. Um, but if you've got a mix across the rat tree, like here, this half is actually is green around the back, but the front here is uh, is crisped off quite 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 markedly. But there's it's it's not even. Um, and if I look, this tree hasn't been turned regularly. And to be fair, you should. Rotate your trees so different parts of them face the prevailing conditions at different times of the day. Um, what's happened? That's the back of the tree, um, and the leaves are pretty good there, not much damage. Um, and I haven't rotated it, so they've stayed relatively health, healthy and vigorous. This stuff, which has been um, hit with, um, to be honest, the howling winds that come through Lincoln quite regularly, scorched off and dried out the leaf tips. And that's what that is, that's leaf burn. Um, no, no issues. I'm happy there's no issues with the roots because there's a, a, um, a cross section of, of leaf types. It's going to be something that isn't inherently worked on. Because if it's watering, then the whole tree is getting the same amount of water, um, and you know the, the growth is relatively uniform across the range. So in this instance, I'm saying this is wind. Um, and yeah, we've had some hot weather, so that's also baked it a bit. So the key there is we can. Uh, a choice we can I'm going to remove the dead stuff but there's no excessive growth on it um, I don't really need to um, encourage this tree to do much more right now so I'm just going to remove the dead stuff um, see if we can get a flush of new growth um, put some fertilizer on it to give it a, an extra boost um, and then I've got a couple more maples all I'm going to do is there's three maples that you've seen this year um, this one which was in the original repot in I think the second ever video I did. I'll do this one, I've got a little forest and a little twin trunk. Um, and we'll work through those relatively quick time um, and we'll see where we go. So, maple tastic. Okay, I can't really see properly whether or not you'll be able to see the, the tips on this at all. But uh, all around you can see definitely 
bright red swellings at and many of those uh, those leaf uh, leaf petioles, which is the little bit in between, I think, the shoot and the uh, the loose leaf stalk. And sometimes where there's quite a marked a lot of the leaf being green, you'll see I just take off the brown. Uh, corners because the rest of that leaf will still photosynthesize. So I just take off the tips, leaves like that. A few um, leaf burn tips and of course it'll be the tip that will go first in any issue with, with water problems. And there's also a part of it that's actually the, the leaves are not necessarily the changing colour to a, a redder colour. So I suppose this would come under the terms of partial defoliation. Coming around to the back, you can see what I mean how green it is. There's a few leaves there that, and that day is that's a, a pretty good indicator that you're talking about wind. Okay, there is some, um, I mean, there's still some leaves on there, oh, this big one, that have got um, some tips that are scorched, but I've got a fair few of them off, um, and also done some cutting of tips, which are perfectly fine, um, just that bit of the leaf's dead, it's not going to affect anything, but the rest of the green stuff will still, uh, still work quite fine, um, to be honest. Taking the tips off is as much about cosmetic look as anything else. So yeah, so that's had uh, partial defoliation. Um, that would be as a result of, in this case, wind burn. I'm uh, this actually. There's still some uh, fertilizer in there, which does sort of say to me it's not it's not taking the fertilizer too well. So there could be something in the roots there. Right. So that's that one. Um, before I go on to the other ones, they're going to be exactly the same principle. Where I do see some obvious errors, I might see uh, errors, um, some obvious growing things. I might see three coming from one junction, all the usual pruning rules. Again, I'm doing selections on those now as well. But apart from that, this tree probably won't be touched again uh, until we get to the, um, the autumn drop, when I'll then go back and, and do the uh, what I call the major pruning on it. So let's move on to the next one then. Oh. Chinese elms. Um, I'm going to mention them now because again it's another time sensitive. If you've got a what I'd call a Chinese elm or a Zalcova which is um, in uh, tertiary development, i.e. it's a pretty well a finished ramified tree, you need to get your pruning doing now. I'll be doing a video on it but I'm not convinced it's going to be out soon and that's again about giving the tree enough time to produce another flush of growth and harden off before the winter. And just in case you're confused, what I mean by sort of a uh, completed elm, I'll, uh, I'll show you now. That one there, that's uh, what I call a, um, I think in this instance that might actually be a Zalcova. Um, but you've got just some of this extra growth which will need to be all trimmed back and, and pruned back, but uh, that's the sort of work you need to be doing now. And this one, again you'll have seen this one in a number of videos I've produced. Um, this is now second flush, which needs to be pruned off. Um, I'm just going to go down and lighten it right down. Uh, you've got the branches actually going over that way. I've already can see into there now, and I'm just Taking it back to splits in two, reducing um, lengths. Yeah. And I mean the maples can get the maples can get absolutely careless. So you've got two there. It's the main is where it started from, but from that there's a whole host of stuff, which is nearly impossible to, to work out. 
So I try and take the stuff that's obvious. And a lot of this will get resolved in the um, in the autumn. Here it's such a chaotic mess of branches and everything. There's going to have to be some work done on this, but mm. I'll cut these right back. Um, because this could have been a branch that was going to be removed anyway, but I want to see if I can get some budding from lower back, get a lower stuff here. The worst thing is that they'll often send out two parallel shoots from the same point, and you're forever removing those as well. See, the problem I've got up here is that branch there and that one are going to be interfering with each other. So I think the end result is going to actually be take this thicker one off. Yeah. Hmm. Who knew I was going to do that? Okay. That's had a... Um, Probably a semi-hard pruning, hard pruning, I don't know, that's had a pretty good strong prune on it to be honest, that second flush of growth, but it's a healthy tree, um, it's now got lots of room for air and sun and all the good things, and I'm sure that will respond very, very well. Um, it's also given me a chance to actually see into the line of this, yeah, a lot of potential for that. <sighs> Next one. Uh, again, there'll be a clip somewhere up there about when I put this together. This is just fun. I, I gave no thought to how this went together. I just wanted to use this Dawn Isaac pot um, and see how they did. And to be fair, they've done really, really well. It doesn't help when all the prunings drop onto it. So, give it a quick spin. That's the front, I think. I think I think that's a pretty nice looking uh, composition. Still very young in its development. Let's see what we're going to do to it then. And on this one already I can see there's a lot of younger growth coming through. So where I see that I take the big leaves off straight away. So I've got the start, a little black fly. Not there yet, but little bodies. Okay. Alright, so they've got two trees, that's about as far as I'll go. They've got burning on their tips. Certainly there's more than sort of 60-70% of the leaf structure in good shape, so. Okay, so um, as I said, by now you should be well aware of what I was trying to do. It's thinning out, reducing, you know, getting rid of obvious errors. Um, just trying to make the job easier when I go in again in uh, in November time. But yeah, so a lot clearer. Um, all the trees look healthy. And. Uh, yeah, I look forward to this uh, moving on, I say. These are all sort of seven to eight year old saplings. Oh, they're not saplings now. Some uh, bio gold in there.
Okay, so again we've seen this one, you've seen that in the, uh, in the Easter parade or was it the spring show? Um, you'll see the repot on it when it was first potted into this Dawn Isaac. Um, yeah, little put together as a twin trunk. We'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna do the same thing with this. This tree has a really ugly, ugly great swelling there. Um, truth is I'll probably lose that. I don't like that at all. The trouble is because mm, I could, yeah, there's no obvious place to take it off. That's almost horizontal, so I can't take it back to there. There's, the only other thing is to actually take it all the way back down here. It's the material you have. Certainly not all perfect, that's for sure. Lost sight where I was up to. And this is where sometimes you've got to just remember to hold back and, and wait until a more appropriate time, which is going to be in the autumn, when you can see it without all the leaves on and get a much better feel for the form of it. Oh, too many straight lines on this. And I've got parallels going up there, so I can't really sort them out now. Oh, what we have got, it's thinned out. So there you go. Um, this one has still got a lot more foliage on it, but I'm happy for now to leave it like that. This one's got a long way to go in the development phase, and Probably the argument here is like many of the stuff I do, I put this in a pot just a weeny bit too early in my desire to use something like that. And uh, yeah, so I will uh, go around over the next day and literally hack through all the rest of the uh, maples in the same way. The tridents this year are definitely looking a little bit more cooked. Um, the location I put them this time definitely suffered from wind, so they're looking a bit raggy, not the uh, the best. Might show you one in, in another video. So, yeah. so from uh, top of the garden, having uh, shown you what I'm doing with the uh, the maples until basically until autumn. Um, farewell. Cheers.